Hello and welcome to Pokemon Red. I will be your guide today. My name is Vato. I am here to do my very first walkthrough, Pokemon Red. It's only suitable because it's the first game I've ever played when I was a kid, so this should go well. Alright, here we go. Hello there. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Oak. Please call me the Pokemon Professor. This world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them to fight. Myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. Well, that's neither or, right? Alright, my name, obviously, I'm gonna go with Vato. I'm not a gang member or nothing, but Vato Loco was a nickname given to me by a coach in 8th grade when I first played as a quarterback in middle school, so the name kind of just stuck with me. Alright, and here we go, naming your rival. What should we name him? I don't know. Nah, I know. I always name him my older brother. My older brother has been my rival since I could remember. Matt. Matt used the name. Matt's short for his name. Alright, here we go. Vato, your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures where Pokemon awaits. Let's go. I already know I'm going to sweep the game with Charizard and everything is going to be good. You know, beat the Leap or one Pokemon. Nah, I'm just kidding. Alright, Vato is playing the NES Super Nintendo. Okay, it's time to go. And before you go, you always want to come up here when you start this game. And withdraw this potion. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of do a full walkthrough, show you everything to get, all the hidden items that I can. I know people have done these kind of walkthroughs before, but you know, I want to give a crack at it. Maybe you'll enjoy one of these walkthroughs that I do. Maybe you won't. Well, we'll find out. And there's something amazing on TV. It said Professor Oak. Wait, what? I don't understand you. I'm leaving. I'm out of here, Mom. Never see me again. Alright, here we go, little town. This is Matt's house. But we'll go in there a little later. Alright, come over here. Vato's house. Yeah, I own the house. That's why I gotta go make the money, Mom. This chick says I'm raising Pokemon too. When they get strong, they can protect me. I don't even have a Pokemon. How are you saying you raise Pokemon too? How do you know I'm about to start raising Pokemon? Stalker. No wonder she's outside my house. Technology is incredible. You can now store and recall items and Pokemon as data via PC. Thought this was Pokemon, not Digimon. Alright, this looks like Professor Oak's house. Oak's Pokemon Research Lab. So I guess you don't have a house. Over here, what is this chick gonna say? Professor Oak is the authority on Pokemon. So many Pokemon trainers hold him. In high regard. Nah, he's a scrub. Alright, here we go. I study Pokemon as Professor Oak's aide. What? He has aids. Yeah, he has two apparently. He also says the same thing. Alright. And here we have the three Pokeballs that decide your fate for the rest of the game. Nah, I'm just kidding. Here we go. Yo, Vato Gramps isn't around. Alright, short and sweet, I guess. Is this the computer where we can store Pokemon? No, there's an email. Haha. <laughs> Calling all trainers, the elite trainers of the Pokemon League are ready to take on all comers. Bring your best Pokemon and see how you rate as a trainer. Pokemon League HQ Indigo Plateau. P.S. Professor Oak, please visit us. Why, is, why do they want him to visit? He's a professor, not a trainer. Well, I guess we'll find out what's going on there. Here we go. I'm just gonna, uh, well, Oak is nowhere to be found. I'm just gonna run out of here. Go. Oh, no. He caught me. Yeah, Professor Oak's gonna stop you every time here. Except for Pokemon Yellow. Oh, speaking of Pokemon Yellow, if you get that potion and after you get Pikachu, and after you battle and he's all healed up, 
Even though he's healed up, she keep trying to give him that potion, and he will max his level happiness after about five, ten times. All right, let's see what he's got to say. Gramps, I'm fed up with waiting. Matt, let me think. Oh, that's right. I told you to come here. Just wait. Here, Bato. There are three Pokemon here. Haha, -ha, where are they? They're inside the Pokeballs. That answers my question. When I was young, I was a serious Pokemon trainer. In my old age, I have only three left. But you can have one. Choose. Hey, Gramps, what about me? Shut up, Brett. Eh, I mean, Matt. <laughs> Basically is what he said. Alright, I'm going to start over here. Bulbasaur, the grass poison Pokemon, stands at 2 feet 4 and weighs 15 pounds. I'm not interested in him, unless I'm doing a speed run, because he can breeze through the first two gems. Alright, and over here we have... Squirtle, standing at 1 foot 8, 20 pounds, little fat freak. It's all shell. Ha ha ha. Nope, I do not want the water type. Eh, kind of said it already. Charizard is who I want, so Charmander, 2 feet tall, 19 pounds. That's who I'm going with. So, you want the fire Pokemon Charmander? No crap. Yes, I will take Charmander. Yeah, the grass types level up quick, fire type level up the slowest, water's intermediate, I guess. And I will name him Pyromaniac. There we go, it fits, it fits, if it fits, I sit. Alright. And of course, your rival is going to pick the typing that's strongest against you. Cause he's a dick. All right, Squirtle is received. I don't think he nicknames his Pokemon. Is that it? Y'all don't want nothing else? All right, I'm out. I'm gonna go catch Pokemon. Oh wait, what? Wait, Bato. Let's check out our Pokemon. Nah, I'm good. You know what? All right, I'll fight you. You ain't got a Squirtle. All right, here we go. Every time there's gonna be a first rival battle. Matt's gonna want to fight because he's a little prick. All right, Matt's sent out Squirtle. Go Pyromaniac! All right, Squirtle's gonna have Tail Whip and Tackle. Charmander is obviously gonna have Scratch and Growl. Then Bulbasaur will have Tackle and Growl. So yeah, Squirtle gets the defensive drop, and we get the attack drops. I think it drops 20% each time you use it. I'm not really sure with the mechanics. I just play Pokemon. Yeah, he's gonna try to lower your defense so he can kill you in about three turns. I rather not. I rather go for the kill while he's over there dancing around, whipping his tail back and forth. I whip my tail back and forth. No. Scratch all day. <laughs> as many toe whips as he's using, I'm out with one hit and I'll probably die. Or faint, as they say in Pokemon. Oh, and that was a critical hit. So all those tail whips do nothing to me. Yeah, surprisingly, whenever you use critical hit, even though you do the stat damage to help you, it ends up backfiring when you get a critical hit, because then all that doesn't matter. It just uh, does the attack power plus, I think, 50%. So, yeah, I'm pretty glad that he didn't get that hit off without the crit, because that would have probably just murdered me right there. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's go in Matthew's house, see what happens. Oh, and here's his sister. Hey, how's it going? Nothing? All right. Rejected? Oh, no, don't go back in there. All right, and now we can continue on Route 1. Here we go. Now, on this route, you can generally find Rattata and Pidgey. Yeah, and this is going to be a normal walkthrough. I'm just going to try to do a full walkthrough. Uh, try to have a team of six and uh, find all the hidden items. And here we go, first wild encounter, and it's with the Pidgey. 
Pidgey's a normal flying and it normally has sand attack and tackle. But I will not be using one in this walkthrough. Well, I don't know. Maybe, because I don't think Charizard can learn fly in this in red, red version. I think that's only in yellow version. So we might need a flying type on our team just to get around a little quicker. But we'll see. Yeah, and there we go, level 7, surprisingly leveling up kind of quick right here. Yeah, I'm not really going to grind much, only before the first gym, since I have the worst possible starter to take on the first gym. Brock, obviously, if you've been playing Pokemon, you know this. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend taking on Brock with just a Charmander. And that means I will have to catch a Pokemon pretty soon. So, y'all go ahead and try and guess which one that is if I don't catch it in this video. And let's hope I don't die here. And it looks like I'm going to. That's pretty embarrassing. Now I'm going to have to go all the way back home. It's ridiculous. Got lucky with that first critical hit. I should have probably just healed up, but I mean, it's not really that bad. We're still at the beginning. And here we go. We get to get revenge on this Pidgey for killing Pyromaniac so early in my walkthrough. Yeah, guys, pretty annoying when a wild Pidgey at level 4 takes out your starter at level 7. But yeah, that's what we're going to have to deal with right now. I'm going to take a couple of guts. And another critical hit. How is this happening? Why don't I get any critical hits? Tired of for Gen 1 not being fair with the crits. Yeah, in Gen 1, basically, if you use Bulbasaur and learn Razor Leaf, I think it's like 98% of the time you use Razor Leaf, it's going to be a critical hit. And I have no idea why. But yeah, that's what happens. Uh, trainer tips. Uh, the battle moves of Pokemon are limited by their power points. PP. To replenish their PP, rest your tired Pokemon at the Pokemon Center. Alright. And I think this is a good resting point for this video. For being my first video. We made it all the way to Viridian City, and yeah, I will walk around this video, I mean, this town, and let y'all see more later on. Thank you for watching.